everyone out there. How's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk about PMS. So a couple of weeks ago on my Instagram, which if you're not following me there, feel free to do so. Um, I shared a little post about how from time to time, definitely not every single month, but from time to time, I will experience a pretty bad bout of PMS and specifically a bad bout of depression that usually lasts three to four days be right before my period and then I get my period and I feel totally normal again. And so many of you uh, reached out to me sharing your experiences and it's just, very, very common for for those who menstruate to experience PMS or premenstrual syndrome. And uh, I, I really wanted to open up about it today and just sort of talk more about PMS, a little bit about what it is and what can sort of contribute to it and of course share with you some tips on how we can relieve PMS naturally. And let's get started. So I wanna actually share with you the four different kinds of PMS that uh, we can experience. So the first kind is PMSD, which uh, stands for depression. So this can be feelings of sadness, of, of depression, uh, feelings of withdrawal, feeling like a lack of interest in your usual activities. You might feel lethargic or really tired. PMSD can also manifest as like crying spells. You're just feeling for no reason, you just are crying and crying and, and it seems to be almost um, hard to control. The next type of PMS is PMSA, which stands for anxiety. And so this one is more specific to feelings of anxiety or nervousness or irritability or feeling really overwhelmed really easily. The next type of PMS is PMSH, which stands for hydration or water retention. So this is kind of like your classic signs of um, you know, tender breasts or some swelling, maybe in your extremities, you might feel bloated. And then there's PMSC, which stands for cravings. So these are your kind of cravings for things like sweets or carbohydrates or chocolate, or just generally having like a, an increased appetite, you might have some headaches. So there's lots of factors that can be playing a role in why we experience PMS, but we do know that there's some sort of hormonal, you know, component to it. The shifts in estrogen and progesterone um, after we ovulate can affect serotonin levels. So if there's low levels of serotonin in the body, which is that kind of feel-good neurotransmitter, um, then we might see more things like depression, low mood, um, anxiety, that kind of thing. Just so you know, I have a whole blog post up on uh, the basics of the menstrual cycle. If you wanna learn more about the phases of the menstrual cycle and the kind of hormones that are at play, you can read more, I'll leave that linked below. So with all of that being said, that little overview of, of PMS, I wanna share with you eight ways that we can, you know, relieve PMS or work toward at least having an easier menstrual cycle. So point number one, I have talked about this point before in other videos of mine, but it is very important that I mention here first and foremost, and that is to track your cycle if you aren't yet doing that or if you never have before. I've mentioned that I personally use the app called Clue. I've used this for so many years, but there's many other apps out there. I'll leave a few linked below if you wanna you know, check out using an app where you can just track your period and track, um, you know, what day you're at in your cycle and the symptoms that you might be experiencing, how you might be feeling mentally, physically. By tracking it, we can just understand our bodies better. I personally find that if I'm feeling particularly stressed out, then I tend to experience worse PMS symptoms. Taking things off of our plate if we're able to, or just, you know, practicing some um, anti-stress, techniques that can really be helpful. This is really important, but specifically what I wanna talk about here is just having support in general. So having support comes from having a support system, whether it's your partner or friends or a family member that you can just talk to, you can talk about your feelings, right? If you're experiencing PMS and you're feeling depressed or if you're feeling really anxious, sometimes it seems like it's for no reason, but talking about how we feel is so important. Just to have someone to listen to us and to make us feel like it's okay, um, and to know that what we are 
feeling and experiencing is real and it's there and it's valid and it's okay. And just having that support is so key. Number three is physical activities. So I don't know about you guys out there. Let me know if you can relate, but one of the ways that my PMS, you know, when it, when it does show up, it, uh, it can manifest as anger. I'll have like angry outbursts or irritability, right? We feel really irritable and we get set off really easily. For example, my, uh, my blender wasn't blending fruit properly the last time I had some really bad PMS and I just, like the anger that I had inside of my body was so intense about, the, like abnormally intense. It was like I didn't need to be so frustrated at my blender. Um, but what I want to say here is, you know, whenever we have pent up emotions like that, whether it's anger, frustration, or, or what have you, physical activity really comes in handy here. And even just in general, right? Exercise is very good for our mood, um, getting some endorphins, getting outside, going for a walk, going for a run. But even if it's like, you just feel like you need to release that pent up energy, do a little bit more of a high intensity, you know, type of movement or exercise, um, when we feel like that can actually be really helpful. Number four is uh, to eat, to make sure that you're eating enough uh, and specifically keeping your blood sugar balance. So um, again, coming back to my experience, I definitely find that, you know, I'm going to be much more likely to have PMS symptoms kind of exacerbated if I'm not eating enough or if my blood sugar is a little bit out of whack or if I'm hungry, right? I mean, with anyone, you're more likely to be irritable if you are hungry and not eating enough and if your blood sugar is out of whack. Um, but especially, you know, before your period with PMS, that it can be much worse. So make sure that you are simply eating enough. Make sure that you're eating enough uh, food through the day. I actually will be sharing with you very soon in an upcoming video, um, 10 signs that you're not eating enough. So stay tuned for that. But you know, what I do also want to point out here when it, when it comes to eating enough is making sure that we are eating um, enough whole foods that provide us with that fiber, those healthy fats, complex carbohydrates, uh, protein, right? That make us feel satiated and full and much more balanced. Speaking of nutrition, let's talk about a few specific nutrients that we want to keep in mind that might be helpful actually for easing PMS. So calcium is essential for all manner of things, our bones, our teeth, our heart, muscle and nerve function. And research has actually linked calcium and also vitamin D. Having an adequate amount of those in our diet and in our body is linked to a reduction in PMS symptoms. So that's pretty cool stuff. So you wanna make sure that you're getting um, lots of calcium rich foods in your diet. Think of things like dark leafy greens are a great source of minerals, um, navy beans, almonds, tahini or sesame seeds, and other foods like turnip greens and um, tempeh, which is a fermented soy. Yogurt and cheese is also a great source of calcium. And you know, in the fall and winter months, you might want to consider taking a vitamin D supplement or even supplementing with calcium and vitamin D if you don't feel like you're getting quite enough of it. I'll leave a link below to one that I personally really like. Next is magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral that helps with the relaxation of muscles. So it can potentially help with things like cramping, um, can help with things like constipation as well if you're experiencing some kind of digestive discomfort. And also magnesium is really good for stress as well if you're feeling stressed out. Now when it comes to PMS specifically, there was a study that showed that magnesium combined with vitamin B6 was helpful for um, PMS symptoms. Whenever you think about magnesium, think about dark leafy greens, your, you know, your good dark rich vegetables are a great source. I quite like the brand Natural Calm for magnesium as well. If you are someone who tends to get anxious 
easily or specifically if you deal with PMSA or a lot of anxiety or irritability before your period and you are someone who does consume caffeine in any type of form, whether it's coffee or dark chocolate or matcha or green tea, any of these things, black tea, um, you just might want to consider reducing it and seeing if it helps your PMS symptoms because caffeine is a nervous system stimulant and can definitely kind of put you a bit on high, high alert and it make you a little bit more irritable or anxious. And lastly, number eight, what I want to mention here is to give yourself permission to rest and to have some self-compassion. A lot of people find that in their luteal phase, which is that two-week phase before you get your period, a lot of women just in general feel a little bit more tired. You might feel a little bit more fatigued. and. It's okay to rest a little bit more if you're able to and if you feel like you need to and to have that self-compassion for yourself, which is saying to yourself, it's okay. It's okay if you feel a little bit less productive. It's okay if you're feeling a little bit more tired. Self-compassion is so important because when we're hard on ourselves, when we're beating ourselves up for feeling a certain way, for not you know, living up to our standards, then it just makes us feel worse. Take that time that you need to support yourself and nourish yourself in whatever way that um, helps you the most. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this subject helpful um, based on the, the post that I shared on Instagram. I know a lot of you really could relate to having PMS and uh, depression and anxiety before your period. So I really wanted to shed some light on this. Um, I will leave some resources linked below for ways that you can track your cycle as well as um, some other videos and blog posts that I have on the topic of women's health and the menstrual cycle and all that good stuff. So check those out below and I will see you all in the next one.